This is Will Cooper. I am here with Bobby Newman of J.C. Newman Cigar Company. Cigar Company. And, and Fuente and Newman. And Fuente Newman, yeah. Uh, we're here um, in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Village Tavern here for an event tonight um, featuring uh, Bobby Newman uh, being um, hosted by the Tinderbox of North Carolina and Craig Kess. We thank him for this time. Bobby, uh, thanks for making some time to talk to us tonight. Oh, it's great to be up here. Thank now, you. Now, Bobby, your family has a long history in the cigar business. Um, why don't you take us a little through that? Sure, just just real briefly. Um, we are J.C. Newman is the is the oldest cigar company in the United States. We're 120 years old. Our grandfather came from Hungary to the United States in 1888, and he started our business, J.C. Newman Cigar Company, in Cleveland, Ohio, in May of 1895. In fact, while the cigars were smoking, this is Grandpa J.C. This is his picture. This is what he looked like in May of 1895 when he started our company. He was 20 years old. He landed in Baltimore in 1888 as a 13-year-old Hungarian immigrant. Uh, the immigration officer said, you can't come in the United States unless you have a middle name. And he was, Grandpa JC was very short. In fact, when fully grown, he was like 5'2", and his wife is 5'6". Uh, so you should see that their wedding pictures are all like this, <laughs> which is pretty funny. But um, immigration officer said, why don't you call yourself Caesar? You could be Julius Caesar Newman. And he, the immigration officer misspelled by accident his last name, uh, the name Caesar. It should be A R. It says E R. And when we, we launched this in 2010, an anniversary of Grandpa J C's 135th birthday, um, we sent the ad to Cigar Aficionado, and they and they called us. They said you spelled Caesar wrong. It should be A R. We said no, that's the way it is. It was thanks to the immigration officer in Baltimore. <laughs> That's a great story. So, obviously, from Ohio, you, you made it down to Tampa, where um, J.C. Newman is well known. How did that? How did that all go about? Well, well, what we did, and if you and I were going to start the, and our listeners were going to start in the wine business today, and you elected me as your leader or advisor, I'd recommend we go to Napa Valley or Sonoma. So, Grant, at the time. Uh, in the early 50s, Tampa had 10 large factories making over 500 million cigars a year with using Cuban wrapper, binder, and filler. Grandpa J.C., at the age of 78, when most men are retired, uh, he moved the whole family from Cleveland to Tampa, and uh, we were the 11th fa large factory there. And these, uh, we had hand, a combination of hand cigar makers and machines in Cleveland. We moved all of our machine cigar machines made by American Machine and Foundry to Tampa. We 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 were making, and these machines uh, were made in 1931 by American Machine and Foundry. Very old, they're they're hand operated, and we still use them today. We make 60,000 cigars a day in Tampa. We use all women; they have better dexterity. Um, it's uh, they're, they're all short filler cigars, and we sell the cigars. Uh, they call called factory throwouts. Terrible name, but they we only we sell them to smoke shops and tobacco outlets only. So that factory, it's iconic. You see that clock, there. right? Right. Now, the sad news is that's the last operating cigar factory. It, it is. Uh, when Grab J.C. moved in 1954, uh, seven, he died in the in his office at 50, 1957. He was 83 years old, and. Um, my father took over, and then the, the Cuban embargo came in in 1961 when John F. Kennedy said, All right, nothing, no more, no more tobacco, no more tobacco, no more cigars, no more rum, nothing, no more sugar. The embargo is still in effect today, and um, this this is what 50, 50, 54 years later. Yeah. Is that my math is right. Um, the, um, but. We are, and so what, oh, what happened, Gar, brands like Garcia Vega, which is known as like a drugstore cigar, at one time was a very fine cigar, uh, they closed up and they, they, they closed their factory as an example in Tampa, they moved to Philadelphia and they merged with a company called Phillies, you've heard of Phillies yes, Cigars, yep. and uh, their Gold Label, which is a great company, was bought by General Cigar Company, yep. they moved that up north, uh, Perfected Garcia, they closed, it, went, it just went on and on. Um, so, we and the Fuente family became the last working factories, and in 1986, we had a leveraged buyout. My father, my brother, and I bought all 17 of our relatives, and 
uh, Carlos Fuentes Sr. and Jr., they were making uh, a brand called Moya, M-O-Y-A, in their factory, and they wanted to close it and concentrate on their factory that they in Santiago, which they, where they are today. So uh, Carlos asked if we'd make his Moya cigars, and we said we would, but we'd like to get back on the hand cigar making business. So we had a brand called La Unica, and Carlos Fuentes, he picked the four sizes, and and they developed the blends with my father, and uh, it was called La Unica, which means in Spanish, the only or the one, mm -hmm. La, La Unica. And uh, it was called Dominican Primeros, which means Dominican first. Prior to that, all the bundle cigars were always seconds. You know, they would have a hole in the wrapper, or the, the wrapper right. would be off color. Well, these were first, and they were more expensive, but they, they took off. And at the time, we were making Quest Array. Excuse me. We're making Quest Ray in Tampa on long filler machines. Uh, we had four operators using Cameroon wrapper, and we it, La Unica became so successful. We shut our La Unica. We, we shut our Quest Ray production down. We're making forty thousand a day, and we switched to had Carlos Fuente Jr. and Senior make them. And then in nineteen ninety, we started Fuente and Newman. And we started becoming the distributor uh, and importer for Arturo Fuente cigars. And uh, so we've been with them. To, this is our 20, let's see, is it my math is right, 25th year together. Wow, that's, that's an amazing uh, partnership. You know, in, in any business today, to go 25 years, that's, have that type of collaboration, it's amazing. But, you know, the way it works, is my father, my brother, and I always felt if we were down to our last dollar, we'd give the Fuentes 60 cents. They've been, they've been very, very good to us. And uh, we think we've been great partners, and it's worked out very well. That's great. That's great. And so you got into the business, obviously. Was it always your intent to get into the cigar business, you know, when your dad was doing it? I'm sure. I'm only 39 years old. Actually, <laughs> I'm younger than Will. <laughs> yes, that's right. In 1960, my mother took, I can tell you the story in 30 seconds. My mother took my brother and I to our cigar factory. And it's, I used to go on, my father back then, everyone worked six days a week. 1960, she, I, mean, it's, I remember, that's the first time I went through the factory and that I remembered in Tampa. And they were making, we were making Rigoletto Palma Grandes. We were making 300,000 cigars a day, working two shifts. And I, 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 that, was, that was really cool how these things operated. This was on a Friday. On Saturday, we drove down to uh, Miami, the Fountain Blue Hotel, which just opened oh, up. Man. And I, I, we thought we were going to... Uh, uh, to uh, the, the French Riviera it was beautiful. Right. And my father took us on Saturday. So let's make some calls together. So Dad took my brother and me, Eric, and, and we, the first shop we went into, uh, a man came in and he bought. He put, he put down a dollar. He bought a pack of Rigoletto Palma Grandes I had just seen being made, made and packaged and put in cases, and that had such a powerful influence on me um, that I always. From that time, I knew I wanted to sell cigars for a company. And I was lucky because most people don't know what you want to do until later in life or you go to college or, or whatever. But I knew from then on, I knew at the age of nine, <laughs> age of nine now you know how old I am, uh, what I want to do for the rest of my life. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So fast forward. Now uh, J.C. Newman has become well-known as a premium hand-rolled cigar company. We, we, we have a factory in, well, thank you, uh, Toro Fuente makes all of our Dominican cigars, which we're here today, we're doing a Diamond Crown, a great Diamond Crown a dinner, and we'll be in Hickory, North Carolina tomorrow. Oh, it's great up there. Yeah. And with Diamond Crown, the classic, the Connecticut shade, the Maximus, which is Ecuadorian, and then the, wait, we're smoking the Diamond Crown Julius Caesar, which is a, an Ecuadorian Havana seed. And, um, but we have a, a factory that my brother and I own in Nicaragua. And uh, we make 75,000 handmaids a day. There's no machinery down there. We make Brickhouse, Perla del Mar, uh, El Baton, House Handmaids, and Quorum Cigars. And it's the second largest factory in Nicaragua, second only to Drew Estate, which they make about 115,000 a day. And they're owned by our friends from Swisher in Jacksonville now. Wow. You know, I, in my local, one of, my, one of the local shops I go to across town, uh, sorry, Craig, um, <laughs> is, uh, they, I mean, I just see a lot of people smoke quorums. And, yeah. um, you know, it's just, a, it's a great cigar for the value price it, of that thing. The reason, and we sell 12 million a year, yeah. and it's growing, knock on wood, double digits, is it's a great, it's, 
it's one of the great values for a handmade cigar. We have it in have the classic, uh, the, the dark wrapper. Uh, it's it's Samantha wrapper. We have it in, in, in Connecticut Sea, grown in Ecuador. And we now have it in Maduro. And that Maduro, it, it's it's a Connecticut broadleaf uh, binder. And boy, it comes through so, it's such a nice, flavorful, sweet cigar. Again, it's it's a cigar that people would, um, a lot of people enjoy it, obviously. People use it to play, uh, when they play golf, mow the yard, or whatever. Or just it's sitting around. Like there's there's two fire pits out here. It's all set up for people to smoke cigars. Yeah. And El Baton, another value cigar. It got you a cigar aficionado rating a few years ago, which I, I've always loved that cigar. Well, well thank you. It's uh, the highest rated cigar we've ever had is, is what you and I are smoking. The Diamond, the Diamond Crown Julius Caesar got a 96. But the El Baton, 91. The Brickhouse got a 92. Yeah. And... Uh, those are also value cigars. They're in the five to six dollar range, and you don't have to mortgage your house to buy these cigars. Right. And then, of course, Diamond Crown. Now, from the Fuentes, that is your pre your premium line. Right. This is our Rolls Royce. This is our Bentley. Uh, the, the, the Fuentes had a very successful FFOX, uh, Fuente Fuente Opus X. Great cigar. Very very terribly oversold. And we have the Diamond Crown. Uh, when Dad was uh, for his 80th birthday, before his 80th birthday, and the, the company's 100th anniversary in 1995, because uh, uh, the company was started in 1895, Dad wanted to come out with the most expensive cigar that's ever been. He wanted nothing most expensive. He wanted to come out with the best cigar. It was a line of. He said, "We're going to have a line of 54 ring gauge cigars." And no, the biggest cigars, the only molds, the biggest molds at the time, believe it or not, were 52, which now they have 80, 80 ring gauges and 70. We even make a, we make a 70 ring gauge cigar in Nicaragua. But then it was, my father, our father was always original. He said, if you copy someone else, you don't have, you don't deserve to be successful. Be original. So a line of 54 ring gauge cigars, <clears throat> Connecticut shade, uh, the, the best of the best Connecticut shade. Uh, double fermented. No one in their right mind would double ferment it because it takes so much time. Right. But it sweats out all the impurities. It got tremendous ratings in Cigar Aficionado. We launched it in Beverly, in Beverly Hills at the Grand Havana Room. And, uh, and then same year, the uh, Fuente Newman and the Fuente family launched FFOX in, uh, in Boston. So they, they went west. They went from Boston to, all the way to California. And we, this where we launched it using, we opening up, talking about opening up smoke shops in, in the New England area and coming, coming going west. With Diamond Crown, we, we went from the west to the east. It's almost like the golden, was it the golden spike of the railroads right. back in St. Louis? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, that's awesome. Now, once ago, I got to ask you about it. I've heard about it for a while, the Black Diamond. When can we see that? Well, next year, we've been working on this blend with the Fuentes for, for three years. It's going to be, it'll be a Connecticut Broadleaf, but it'll be a, it'll be a, a, a Havana Sea. It's got a unique taste to it. It's fuller body, but very smooth. And the secret of cigars is the longer you age tobacco, the smoother the tobacco is. Um, and I will swear on my dad, my dad's watching up over us. He died at the office at 90 years old in 12 weeks. And he was dressed like I won, I was. And I would swear in my father's grave that the Fuente family has the largest largest inventory of aged tobacco in the world. But again, the longer you age tobacco, like scotch, the smoother it gets. Yep. And that's why that's why Diamond Crown has been so successful. Yeah, I mean, when we were talking on our previous show how the Julius Caesar we think is one of the best aged cigars. Ready to smoke right when you get it, but but put a few of them away. You're really going to be in for a treat with that. Yeah, they're, they, we've had a lot of fun with this. And, and we export to 81 countries. And I'll tell you a story, uh, and your listeners may be interested, or people that watch this show, that uh, we had a tasting of... Uh, the IPCPR of Europe is called, it's in Dortmund every year, it's, it's called Inner Tobac, and we're there every year, and we um, uh, our, our, we go in with our importer, Arnold Landre, uh, they have a booth there, and uh, so I, we, we, we did tastings around the around Europe, and Diamond Crown, we did with Diamond Crown, because uh, which is, I think, everybody listening, and, and you, me, and your 
family. If you say, if you're going to take, if you go into a desert island, you've heard this before, Will, if you could take one drink, one woman that wasn't your wife, <laughs> say to me, hi, Meredith, my wife, uh, and, and one cigar, what would you take with me? Well, I would, I would take the Diamond Crown Julius Caesar. Absolutely. Great it. cigar. It's a great cigar. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, you know, before we wrap up, you know, you, you mentioned one other thing. It's 140 years now, I think. Or you sort of mentioned because it was 1895 the company started. So now we're in 140 years. So I wanted to just congratulate you on that because, again, when you look at companies that stay in business, you know, 140 years is just an eternity. Yeah, Will, and it, it's actually it's 100, it's 120 years. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, you, okay. <laughs> that may, that may right. be my fault. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. I had to say that because Craig Cass, uh, who the Tinderbox, who was sponsoring this dinner, uh, he was a math major at, at Appalachia State. Like, <laughs> he will kill both of us. <laughs> Can't you guys add? <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you for that. Correction. Yeah, no, but we've we've been very, we've like everybody we've survived the uh, we survived world wars, the, the recession, the, uh, the, I mean the depression. Of course, our biggest challenge right now, and, and my brother and I have been at the tip of the spear, along with the Fuente family, with Cigar Rights of America. Craig Cass is the president of the IPCPR, you know, with this thing with the FDA. And uh, so we are doing everything. We are leaving nothing on the field to make sure that we get a pass on this. And I pray about it every night, yeah. to be honest. I'm um, glad. Well, we appreciate the efforts on that a lot. I know there's a lot of personal time you guys put into that, as well as resources. So. Um, you know, I know we're in good hands with the fight. Let's hope, let's hope it goes our way. Well, From your lips to God's ears, yeah, Will. Exactly. Bobby, I'll let you uh, get back to the event here as we're well, about to get started. You. But thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you, um, Will. Really appreciate it. And come down and see us, okay? Uh, I'm taking you up on that. Okay. All right. And we appreciate it. And again, the people that are listening or watching uh, Last Working Cigar Factory, uh, we do not. It's a closed factory. But uh, it's, it's open to our friends, and you are my new friend, and you are my new friend. So come see us in Tampa, Florida. We appreciate it. This is Will from Stogie Geeks. Thanks again, Bobby. Take care.